right, let's work some multiple choice. We're gonna have one set up for the next three multiple choice questions. And like always, let's start trying to figure out what's the variable in our problem? Is it categorical, is it numerical? Are we in mean land or proportion land? All right, so use the following setting for examples three through five. Researchers wondered whether the trees in a longleaf pine forest in Georgia are randomly distributed. To find out, they divided the forest into four equal quadrants. Then researchers took a random sample of 100 trees and counted the number in each quadrant. So I'm gonna just, I see the number in each quadrant. Here are the data, all right? And then it looks like we have to figure out the appropriate null to test in terms of whether trees are randomly distributed. All right, so if I look at this, what on earth is the variable? So I see I have a random sample of 100 trees. What was I keeping track of for each tree? Was I keeping track of how old they were? how many leaves they had, uh, whether they were oak or not. No, I was keeping track of what quadrant they were in. And you might think, well, that looks like a numerical variable because I see the numbers one, two, three, four, but it's not really a numerical variable. This is just uh, a geographical area, right? It was numbers that represent an area. I could have just as easily called this quadrant A, B, C, or D, or triangle, diamond, square, rectangle, right? So. They're just labels that represent a category. So I have one categorical variable. So my variable here is quadrant, right? And there are four categories. The other thing I wanna prop or point out is if you look at these data values, right here are observed data, these are frequencies. Anytime you see frequencies, you're gonna be in proportion land because we're gonna turn those into relative frequencies. So I know I'm in prop land, right? I had my one categorical variable with four categories. So I know I'm gonna be running a chi-squared test. All right, and as, as I move forward through that, right, we had a categorical variable, which quadrant were you in? We had four groups, four categories. I only had the one row of observed data. Right? I didn't have a table. When I say table, it's more than one row or more than one column. I didn't have that. So I'm gonna uh, run a chi-squared Goff test in a moment. And we're gonna, we're gonna work through that. So I know I'm gonna go chi-squared Goff. All right, now in order for these to be randomly distributed, if trees are randomly distributed, what that means is I should expect an equal number in each quadrant, right? Trees shouldn't be preferring quadrant one over quadrant two. Right? or quadrant four over quadrant three, they should all be equally distributed. So if I've got that happening, all right, if I wanna think about my null proportion, I'm gonna take 100% and divide it by the four categories and get 25% right, per quadrant. All right, so again, if the trees are distributed randomly, then I should have 25% in quadrant one, 25% in quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. That would be the null proportions that I would be looking at here. So let's see what falls in there um, in terms of A, B, C, or D. So the first thing I notice in A, when I look at it, H sub zero, we got the null mu equaling 25, where mu is the mean number of trees in each quadrant. Well, I'm not talking about means, so that is gone, okay? All right, so if I look at B, it says, at least I have a proportion here. And it's just saying let P equal 25%, where P is the proportion of all trees in the forest that are in quadrant one. Well, I'm not just interested in the trees in quadrant one, I'm interested in all four quadrants, not just one. So that's no good. And then we can start to see in parts C and D that I've got the equality that I'm looking for, right? In terms of, I can see all of the proportions are equal to 25%. And they're finally talking about all four quadrants, right? Quadrant I. So that would mean P sub one was for quadrant one. P sub two was for quadrant two. P sub three, quadrant three. P sub four, quadrant four. Okay, great. So then I gotta just pick between these symbols, right? Do I want P's in my null hypothesis or do I want P primes? And again, these are statistics, right? That P prime represents sample data, all right? And we never want sample data in our null hypothesis, so C is gonna wind up being our answer, okay? All right, so with that, we've got our null proportion now. 
Now it looks like they're going to ask us about our chi-squared test statistic. Okay, so if I want to do my chi-squared test statistic, we know that chi-squareds are always going to be the sum of the observed minus the expected squared over the expected. All right, and if I want to calculate my expected, because again, I always give you the observes, you always have to calculate the expected. So we've got NP, so I had 100 trees Right? And I had 25% per quadrant, and that would give me 25 trees per quadrant. So as I start to do this, if we look back at quadrant one, I observed 18. All right, so I had 18 trees observed in quadrant one. I expected 25. I want to square that number and divide by 25. So let's see what's following here. As I look, I see 18 minus 25 squared. That's good. This went the wrong way. That's not great. I mean, technically it'll be the same number once you square it, but the big problem here is they divided by 18 and not 25. Oops, you can't see that. Let me scoot that up and get all of these into view. All right, so what I was seeing is this is in the wrong direction. They did expected minus observed, but technically when you square this number, right, this would be positive seven squared, this would be negative seven squared. They both have a numerator 49, so technically it's the same number. The real problem is that the denominator here is not the expected, they put the observed. So this one's out, All right? This is looking good, observed minus expected. They didn't square it, that one's out. This, they turned everything into proportions, that's also out. And this one, that was the one I didn't rule out because that was looking pretty good. And let me just go through. Well, in quadrant two, I did observe 25 trees. I expected 25, I might have said that wrong, I observed 22 trees, I expected 25, square that, divide by 25. In quadrant three, I did observe 39 trees, I expected 25, take that difference, square it, divide it by 25. And then we had observed minus expected for quadrant four, square divided by expected. So that's looking pretty good, okay? All right, so let's take a look at this last one. This is saying, hey, figure out what to do once you get that p-value. Now, it ran it for me. I could go through and put all that stuff in L1 and L2 and get my chi-squared test statistic, but they're telling me the p-value is 0.0129. So I'm gonna assume that we had a 5% p-value, I'm sorry, alpha level. Oh, and actually, as we look at our options here, they're, they're telling me officially that the alpha is 5%. So whenever your p-value is less than alpha, that means you're gonna reject H naught. Once I do that, I'm gonna get rid of C and D, okay? And then we have to figure out where there was evidence. Was there evidence that the trees were randomly distributed or was there evidence that the trees were not randomly distributed? And that goes back to, do we understand what it means for trees to be randomly distributed? So let's go back here. Let me go back up to the beginning here. So for trees to be randomly distributed, it means each quadrant is equal, right? So 25% of the trees were here, 25% here, 25% here, 25% here. No quadrant was favored over the other. And if you look at the observed data, you can see something's going on in quadrant three, right? They are pumping trees into quadrant three. So the null hypothesis, this, this, Null that we choose, that represents trees being randomly distributed, meaning no quadrant was favored over the other. Each quadrant had 25% of the trees. And we're saying we're gonna reject that idea because we don't think P3 is 25%, right? I also don't think P1 is 25%. I'm not gonna get as specific as to say, I think these are the two that are off. I'm just gonna say I reject the null that the trees are randomly distributed. So if we take a look at our options, right? There is strong evidence that the trees are randomly distributed. That's not true. We don't think they are. There's strong evidence that the trees are not randomly distributed. Okay. All right. So with that, we've got some more multiple choice questions we're going to practice on the next page. I'll see you in a bit.